fueled by Death Guest. What is this like? Playing a freaking cruise ship. I mean, you guys are killing it, a a as it as always anyways, but it's surreal to someone like me who's absolutely never been on a cruise ship before. But then to see you guys rocking the stage, like, is, that, is it surreal for you guys too? Surreal and as crazy as you think, you know, I mean, they asked us to do it. They asked us would we do it last year, and we uh -huh. were doing about eight shows around the world, so we said we can't do it. So we, we've made it this year to do it. Well, I didn't know what we expect, really. I thought, you know, we're on a boat. Sounds aren't going to really work, you right. know. Yeah, Sounds yeah. okay, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we going with this? And then the next thing, you know, I mean, you know, there's a great atmosphere on here, and there's a good vibe with everybody, and... Um, I've had a really good time. Uh, yeah. A better time than I thought, to be honest. Yeah, you know what I mean? ditto. I mean, we've run into Flogging Molly a few times over the years at different festivals, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, didn't really know about this. Like, say, on a boat, it's crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, what the, you know, are you sure? You know, yeah. That kind of stuff. Bunch of punk rockers in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Like yeah. We, yeah. we were saying, like, are, are we are we going to our doom? Like, yeah, is yeah, there, yeah. yeah. Is, is there going to be fires? Yeah. If there is, yeah. sign me up. <laughs> to be honest, you know, back in the day, a little bit, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, in the old days with some of them early bands and yeah, even ourselves in them days, there might have been a bit a bit of trouble on this boat, you know. Oh, yeah. totally. But now totally. it's kind of mellowed out into something else, you know, yeah. which is interesting and. Um, but it's been an amazing atmosphere. You know, once you get on the stage in the hall there, it's you're just doing a gig, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Having sure. said that, the first one was kind of steady sailing, but yesterday, this yeah, year, it was a little there was kind yesterday. of a little bit yeah. on the stage when I'm kind of moving around. <laughs> <and> I, <laughs> Chasing your ass I'm moving like to the <laughs> left, <laughs> and I'm moving to the right, and I'm thinking, if I move too fast, I might, you know, go straight down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. You, know, you could kind of feel it, but... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Holy I crap. know I had a glass of to a champagne for a went on, but I thought, really? <laughs> it's all right. You have to question, is it the open bar or is it the yeah. waves? Maybe yeah. a mix of both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, it is, um, I realize I've really enjoyed it now, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, it's such an experience. Mm. I, I'm so, I'm so happy that Flogging Molly decided to create something so random that on paper, like you and I were saying, mm. like, doesn't seem like it's gonna work. Doesn't seem like it's like that. Might not be a great. Didn't idea. fight the punk rock wars for this. You <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, exactly right. That, but uh, at the end of it, it but, works. Oh, you know, it yeah, works. yeah. yeah I, I, I hope that they do it for years and years to come. Well, it's, it's great incredible. as well in the corporate world of all the bullshit and people trying to sell you shit all the time. You know, yeah. on the TV, you must buy this and that. Taylor Swift and Beyonce, and you know, down yeah. to about four people really that sell ten billion albums every. Um, these are people who've got the passion for music and, mm -hmm. you know, right. in in a different way. You know, that's there's the music business, which, which has gone out to sea in another mm -hmm. way. Yeah, you know, for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's kind of nothing to do with us. That's, yeah. This is like rock and roll guitars plugging in and stuff. Right. And, you know, whereas the corporate world is, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, if you get a chick dancing to a video, how many, you know, you're only trying to see how short the skirt is. You don't really right, know yeah. it's the song. Up. Exactly. Right. You know, but this kind of stuff, it changed people's lives. It means something in a different way. So it's putting them all on a boat like this. You, that's what we're dealing with here. And that's what's good about it, you know. It really People is. People are into the guitars, noise, a bit of fun, you know, life-changing things, you know. Yeah, no, it's, it's incredible. And speaking of life-changing things, mm. um... Where I want to know, I want to go all the way back, and what got, what got you to pick up a musical instrument? Where where when where did that kind of stem from? Well, the music scene at the time was like it was like the progressive rock thing. Now I liked right. a bit of that. I went to see Yes once and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. Because that's what was going. You know. Yeah. You drop a tab of acid and go and mm -hmm. sit there and watch them do a whole <laughs> song, which is like. One song was a whole album, you know. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> movements and fucking <laughs> orchestrations, and you get. But you know, I was like twenty years old, and I thought, fuck. Remember when you know bands had three minute songs and people like the Who smashed their equipment yeah, and told yeah, people yeah. to fuck off, you know. Yeah, right. yeah. And um, that it sort of disappeared, you know. So it was like you need some excitement in your life. So that's how we got back to so like the you know the shorter songs bit of energy right. and also singing about stuff you know that was relevant to us and 
the human condition. I mean, we connect in a lot of ways with people that, um, oh, I feel like that too, or I've had that and all that, you know. Yeah. Rather than singing about mushrooms in the sky and stuff. and <laughs> It's like, fuck, yeah, you know, i got to pay my bills too. And, right. You yeah. know, and my life's fucking shit, so let's celebrate it. You know, all kinds of things. And, you know, there's heavier scenes with Buzzcocks as well with the lyrics and, oh, of, of and the songs and the music and all that stuff. So, that was the importance of it, really. It was like trying to do music that was, like, like I say, relevant to you. It had some preciousness and passion and all the kind of things, you know? Was it tough to navigate the music industry at that point because there was all of this progressive rock at the time and <coughs> you guys were, I mean, coming out there and being as real as possible? Like, was it tough to, to navigate in, during those times? A little bit, yeah. I mean, it, we made a... We made our first demo, and really, we set out to do, make the most uncommercial music possible. Mm -hmm. you know? totally, yeah, yeah. And we made this uh, this uh, demo. We uh, and we well, we made this song, four songs, and it was like we, we come from Manchester originally. So Manchester's like you know two hours away from London, uh -huh. two hours on a train with two hundred miles. And it's like if we go with these tapes. Um, they probably laugh us out of the building or something. So we came up with the idea of making our own record. Now I know back back in the fifties used to do it in the States, but even that, but you know, everybody's kinda of like, if I do a nice song, I'll get a deal from this big kind uh, right. A and R man. Yeah, yeah. And you gotta suck dick and do everything else. <laughs> right. Yeah, and we yeah. thought, what the fuck, you know <laughs> And somehow we come up with this idea for like um Five hundred pounds, say five hundred dollars equivalent. We can make a thousand records to yeah. the people we're playing to in Manchester. You know? yeah. And it was like it's seen as a stroke of genius now, but at the same time, it was a stroke of genius, but also a stroke of necessity. It was like, yeah. well, if we make our own record, we don't have to do all that begging record companies because right. I'm sure they're not interested. As soon as we did that, that inspired a lot of other bands to do it. Because we was the first on the block back in uh, back in. So Britain. so nobody was DIY was at doing, the time. No, no. We, really. We kind of invented that. Yeah. Man. Wow. No shit. So yeah. how did you go about recording that album? You just did it in your basement with a four well, track. It was a four or? track EP. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We got um, we got some money and blagged the studio time. You got to remember, we kind of did them songs live with a couple of overdubs. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Very quickly. It was just an afternoon. Yeah. Maybe four hours. It's and it's, um, it's punk. You don't need punk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like we had this guy Martin Hanna who said he was a producer, and I don't think he'd finish it. <laughs> <laughs> when the engineer was making it sound good, he'd start pulling all the things and messing about, making oh, it sound. Geez. But we got this great unique sound. You yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> like, it was a sound that. Well, I, I, to quote Yeats, the Irish poet, it sounded like a, a terrible beauty was born, he said, about <laughs> the Irish troubles. Yeah. And that's what that was. The engineers made it all nice, like with, like with the Eagles or something, and he's pulling it away. Going, he's making that. it unique. Yeah. yeah, making it unique. <laughs> and I don't think he knew what he did, but, he had, he, you know, it, between all that, you know, he was kind of working in the dark, but he had this spirit of, like, listen, let's break the fucking rules and let's just get on with it like this, you know? Yeah. So we, we made the four tracks, and like I say, it was like, well, if we take them to a record company and that, it, they're probably, you know, you've got to go through all that process. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, that, that was so out there then, they would have gone, what the, what, what's this? You right, know what I mean? Right. Sorry, sir, there's the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we put that out, and that kind of set the whole place, you know, whole place on fire, really, yeah. the whole country. It was like, the Buzzcocks have made their own record. <laughs> Suddenly, <coughs> excuse me, you get about six, you know, eight records, all the major record companies, CBS, it's all these people. They want to sign you up then, you know. That's and how did that go? Did you say, fuck well, you? We, or, or? Yeah, or? we took about a year to yeah. sign up. You know, Malcolm yeah. McLaren, the sex business man, he said, you should sign soon before this thing goes. But we're going, we ain't signing to anybody. Right. We're not just signing anybody and then you're told what to do because the Clash had just signed with CBS. Right. Then they're singing songs like the record company. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we took a little time with it, you know. We had a our own record out. We had the audiences there. What he had done was pull the carpet from the record company's feet. So they didn't know what they didn't know what this punk rock thing was in the beginning. No, not at all. So that was, you know, you can't plan these things, but this is how it all started to evolve. For yeah. Almost seems like a perfect storm. It, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. but we never envisaged all this. It's like, well, if you can't get a deal, funny enough, we can make our own record. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Even that took a while to, you know, it didn't, now it seems so easy, but 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 it, it back in that day it was just like, well, if we do that, at least somebody, well, some of the fans can hear us on record. Yeah. So away it went like that, you know. Right. Was that the was that the moment when you you guys as a band were like, okay, we can do this as a career? Um, well, we never thought be like, but that really, it was kind of like, just go for the day to day thing, really. You know, like now you hear these people say, like, uh, you know, my music career and all this. Right. <laughs> it was just like, well, if we get a gig next week and maybe on the week after, we'll see how we go. You know. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, we never sat down at a table and marketing and planning <laughs> things. And, yeah. And yeah. you know, all that fucking bull crap they do now. <laughs> yeah. It's like you don't know what's going on. You could be dead someone. I said, like. You know, we just took it. But also, the main thing about that first EP, it touched the nerve with people. It was yeah. like, it touched their souls and their minds and going, I feel like that too. Yeah. That EP, that first thousand sold within, you know, minutes and yeah. days. Wow. You know, it's faster than an email. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do people in Scotland and America and, you know, Mexico and all that stuff, how do they know this record's out? I don't know how. That's so in crazy. those days, because you used to write a letter that would take three or four days to get yeah. away. So suddenly, you know, I mean, it, it, people relate to all that. And you can't beat that. That's more no. powerful than any it's authentic. market. That's yeah. why we didn't have billboards. Fire. We had nothing. Yeah. It was just like, I got it. I heard that record. I got what it, I, I, you know, and away it went from there. You know. I think that's why I, I attribute that to a lot of um, the, uh, the success of Buzzcocks. Mm. Of what you guys are, because you're authentic. You mm. always have been authentic, and I yeah. think at the end of the day, that's going to resonate harder with anybody than you know this flashy yeah. girl dancing with the short skirt, like you were saying, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You know, like that's <laughs> gonna like I think that is an incredible and inspiring way to 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 look at. We've what never you do. tried to sell or plan things in that. Exactly. Who do you think we are, Green Day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I know they love us, but some people say to me, they're not the real deal, they're like the manufacturer. When I, I'm not here to say that, but that, <laughs> I, 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 I've it. heard it said. Listen, I love them, but it, we have heard it said. But the difference is, it's like, we made the music, you know, we didn't want to be seen coming out of flashy nightclubs and all this kind of stuff, or yeah. making videos with chicks hanging off, you know. Right. Leather pants. You know. and and <laughs> but, but let me just say this, when we... When we uh, when we eventually signed this deal, this guy, Andrew Lauder, used to come to the gigs, uh, a lot of these a and and stuff. Like and to be honest, after that first record, because we had people taking them out of the sleeves, the plain sleeve, and putting in the picture sleeve. Even me and Pete did a couple of them, and then we'd go to a bar around the corner and go, we can't let it. So we realised we had gigs, you couldn't carry on making the record. Right. So eventually we signed this deal, and one of the reasons that we want to have artistic control a bit, what we do, mm -hmm. you know, right? You yeah. don't want to sign a deal and then they go, "Here's how to walk and talk." Yeah, and right. Don't want to. Don't tell anybody you're married yeah. to. You should do in the sixties. Yeah. Not that we were, but uh, you know all that stuff. Don't do this and don't. You know, record yeah. companies kind of like that sometimes. And uh, then we said, well, the first record on the major United Ice Lab is going to be called All Gas <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so they got a release date up. Now, the a and guy, Andrew Lord, that signed us, said, that's, you know, that's cool with me. But the pressing plant wouldn't press it. It got de It got delayed three weeks at least while they negotiated. They're going, we're not printing this filth and all that. Whoa, yeah, you know, that back in the day, seventy-seven, yeah, yeah. I know we've had the rappers calling people holes and God oh, knows yeah, what. Yeah. <laughs> but at that time, it, it wasn't like that. So, yeah. so yeah. oh, that's a magic! You're, you're <laughs> kidding me. Your first release on a major label. You know? So, did you see a big change when you started working with labels, or were you able to keep things negotiated well, on your terms? We, we we negotiate on our terms. Yeah. It's like that's the first single. <laughs> now everybody knows what you know. Everybody's had a fucking wank or a top. You know, had a little shuffle. They know or not. You know, we got some yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and um, you know, we're going. Well, that's poetry, really. That's modern poetry. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's not just filth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Depending on which way you look at it. But, uh, yeah. Exactly. It's artistic. <laughs> but I got to say, the amount of people that. Um, Come and say, when I bought that record when I was like 14 or 15, you know, the mum and dad had heard it upstairs in the, you know, what, what are you listening to? Orgasm? You know yeah. I mean? That's how 
as sophisticated he was, and that's how innocent he was as well in some ways, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But what was great was getting that out on the major label, you know. Of course. And then the next one that came out, what do I get? The B-side was called Oh Shit, so they came out again. <laughs> <laughs> We're not pretty. Did that one get still? delayed? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. That's why you got the best. <laughs> um, speaking of, the, of those days uh, when, when, you you know, it, you're that's coming out and you guys are catching fire, um, I'm always curious from, uh, like, bands like that, you know, are catching fire in your hometown, in yeah. your in your area, and then you're fi- then you come over to the states. Mm. What was it like when the, when Buzzcocks finally came over to the states for the first time? Well, we um, <clears throat> we took about two years to come over because yeah. we was doing well in Britain mm-hmm. and we was doing a lot of them top of the pops things. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. All that chart stuff. We was having chart hits. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was needed for there, and then we was doing a lot of shows up and down Britain and stuff, and. Um, you know, suddenly, like it, like say, it all caught fire. You know, suddenly, like this punk rock thing came like a carpet bomb. Oh my like, gosh, yeah. We last say it was all word of mouth. Now it was an amazing thing. And it's like, yeah, we've got to get to the states at some point. But it somehow it turned into two years before we got here. You know? And um, but um, we played two nights at the Irving Plaza, all right. and the Ramones came to see us. You know? Oh wow! Unfortunately, I think the drummer. It was live on the radio, and the drummer pulled the ID down, which was probably, you know, <laughs> sacrilege. You know, <laughs> yeah, take, probably. You know, radio double X, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> drummer pulled that down, and then they, the radio people went mad, and some fight broke out backstage. So we were just wow. told to run, you know. Oh, yeah. my God. So we kind of met Ramones, and we said, t- sorry, Joey, Charlie, oh, we've got to go. We've been told. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's a lot of trouble at that game. <laughs> like I say, if that was on the boat now. Um, wow. But we did the two nights there, and um, and then we ended up, um, you know, doing the things up the coast to L.A., and we the, the first gig was at Santa Monica Civic. And the reason why I know it's two years, because like, there was a lot of people waiting by the bus to, you know, s- sign things and yeah, say yeah, hello. Yeah. And um, they said, we waited two years for this, and of course we didn't realise it was that long. So we did the Santa Monica Civic on the first. I do remember him. Um, Elvis Costello was playing the whiskey. I thought, well, if he's playing there, I'm sure. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I thought if he's playing there, we we're gonna play some fucking dive bar somewhere, you know? Yeah. And Santa Monica said it was sold out. You know? Wow. So, Whoa. That's on your first tour, you know? Wow. So the reception was incredibly well when you came to the states. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That two-year delay, really, which wasn't a deliberate thing. Right. But yeah. it built up anticipation. It, it, anti- yeah. yeah. It's like awesome. we'll get there. It's almost like can. you were trying to market. Yeah, absolutely. But <laughs> well, it was like, fuck, we'll go there one day if somebody sorts it out. We're on the tours in Britain. Yeah. yeah. What was your personal mm. um, impression of the States when you when you got to come over here? Well, you know, going in New York, being at the uh, Lexington Park Hotel there, yeah. we stayed up. Um, it's that classic thing in the 70s. There was that, the, the films Cold Jack and that, with yep. steam coming out and yeah. all that kind of stuff. You can remember people like David Bowie had been there and we had yeah. been to New York before as all these kind of people. It's like, wow, that must be great to go to New York, you know. And then you was finally there and that was amazing. It's like we touched base, you know, yeah. we're, we're here, you know. Wow. So I loved it, you know. Yeah. Thing was, I think we spent the first five hours here drinking uh, Budweiser in the in the bar. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the yeah. thing to do when you first yeah, land in America? Sure, yeah. Well, yeah. Go straight well it was t- like, you know, that... You can get Budweiser in Britain now, but at the time, it's like, wow, this is the American beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's difference. like going to Ireland, going yeah. straight for the Guinness. Yeah, yeah you know? exactly. <laughs> That's the kind of thing. But, it, you know, it was exotic, New York, and the States itself, you know. Yeah. you got to remember, we grew up with Batman, the 60s one, and yep. yeah. all the movies. And Adam West, all the, yeah. You know, yeah. all the preconceived things you have about it. So um, it was always good. And they always said that you got to kick ass in America, you know, so we embrace that as yeah. we do, and it's like, look, in, in America, they don't give a fuck about what shirt you're wearing, it's about this, you know. Yeah. yeah. And that's why a lot of British bands, they don't, can't kick ass sometimes when they come over here, a lot of, some of them failed, you know. Yeah, yeah. The day. yeah it happens. Um, I know it's filmed up now, but um, yeah, it was magical to, uh, to, to come to the States now, you know, I mean, I was one, making it from Manchester to London, 
was a big deal. And then the next thing is like New York and everywhere else in the States. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well. and I mean, now you guys have been all over the world. You, you're, you know, you're still going strong. I, you, mm. you talked earlier. Um, how many shows are you guys playing a year nowadays? Well, we did 80 last year. It did seem, we did Jeez. 90 the year before and said we'll take it a little easy. And then before you know it, it's like, well, we're up to 80. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm sure. I'm sure mm. a lot of that's the festival circuit and and stuff. Well, right? there's festivals and shows everywhere, but you know, some of this is like you know you, you kind of fly to Italy for a festival, you're kind of back the next day, and then next day you might be in Spain or the week later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of that goes on. So you're forever like jumping on planes, but that's been my life, and I, you know, I kind of like it really. You know? yeah. <laughs> some band score, you know, on the road and all that, you know, but um. I still like it. It's like, what else am I going to That's what I signed up to do, and that's why I'm here, you know. Yeah. So it still has some magic for yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, you get people, when they're getting our age and stuff, from, from my age, they, oh, man, that's on the road business. I miss yeah. my wife, my kids, and all this kind of thing. <laughs> like, but you're meant for the road. Get some cocaine down here. Stop <laughs> fucking on <morning. laughs> Well, this is a perfect moment for this question, then. Um, on this show, we ask all of our guests this, and, uh, you know, with your entire career, and you you have an absolute love for it, like you just said. You know, you love what you do, and you get to do that. What fuels you to keep doing it? What fuels you to, to wanting to keep doing 80 shows a year and, and going out there? Well, yeah, I mean, we don't have to do it now. I've got houses and things like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. I could sit down and just go, you know, but it's like, we gave a lot in the beginning. It was important to do this kind of music and mm -hmm. make the songs. And you try and do what you can with it and the songwriting and all this kind of stuff and all the rest of it. You know, the songwriting's always interesting as well. And the band working together, it's always amazing. But like you saw the other night, it's, it's about the people, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you get up there and you connect, you know, sometimes you might be a little tired before you go, but after two songs, it's like, whoa, I'm getting... You get two juxtaposed things. You get the band, and then you get the audience. But in between becomes this magic. That's where you see God, Jesus, the devil, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and every other fucking your, thing. your moment of zen. Yeah, the moment of zen there with everything, where the whole of life's turmoil. You know, there's people in the audience with problems. The wife has just left them. Yeah, yeah. You've got to pay the bills. Yeah. But for a moment in your life, you can feel alive for a moment. Mm -hmm. And that's the magic thing. It's like... You can feel it with the audience, you know. It's like, whoa, there is something here. If, you know, something to take away with you there for that hour, hour and a half or whatever yeah. it is. And that's very important, really, you know. And I kind of, for me, that is like, that's really what it's all about, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have been a car salesman or something else. But to have that and to connect with people like that, you know, you may have heard this a little bit before, but it's like there is something magical, and that's all we've got each other really together. Mm -hmm. you know? That's yeah. true. And that shared experience, you can feel it. Each room, everywhere you play, is a different thing, but it's still fundamentally that thing underneath, you know. Yeah. And that's what keeps you going. You, can, If you go on there and think that, you know, I'm just running through the motions. If I felt like that, I'd give up tomorrow, you know? Yeah. yeah. I've just bought a new house in Greece. I've got my house in London. Oh. I could retire swimming every day. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to rock till I drop, you know? That yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but it, it, you know, it's the belief in people and that shared thing that we had at the beginning, the, you know, the rock and roll thing, you know? Yeah. Like the first time I heard Chuck Berry or the Beatles or the Kinks mm -hmm. or something, you know? Yeah. It's, there's something in us that, you know, that's one of the best things you can ever have, you know. Of course. You can have the biggest car in the world, the biggest house, even the biggest cock, but if you're not going to fucking... <laughs> if you ain't got that music there, yeah, that gets you through a lot of things, really. Is there any music that you hear nowadays that you are inspired by? Uh, or, is no, it, or is it slim pickings for the most part? <laughs> Now Chuck Berry's dead, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it is slim pickings now. Yeah. <laughs> I think people are too... And I do it. We're all in the Facebook and the yeah. phones. Yeah. Like, That's what's nice about this, right? Yeah. You get the Absolutely. fuck away from it for yeah. a hot minute. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, nice. I can't get a reception. Right? I thought, what, a, what am I worried about? You know? Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It's it's an excellent feeling to be disconnected for a minute. But, I mean, what you're talking about is exactly, again, the ethos of Buzzcocks. Like, I mean, you're so authentic with it. And that's exactly, mm. if you're authentic in life, I think that is 
what makes life worth it. Yeah, I mean, see, <clears throat> some people get into stardom and show business and all that. I mean, yeah. it was never like that for us. We're not really not impressed with that stuff. It don't mean anything. Right. You don't see all the greats hanging about with all these kind of dudes and people off them, you know. Yeah. Even Bob Dylan will check into a motel somewhere because he's already recognised in a big, you know. Yeah, right, exactly, yeah. exactly. People like that, you know, you don't see them giving it this big one, you know, with big cars and stuff, you know, and right. people's faces on the news. And right. right. But, I mean, it's a, you know, it's about a life-changing shared experience thing, you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's that love of the music and the power, and, and even like on this boat today, it, there's a lot of feeling, a lot of things there, you know. You know the people they're dealing with, they're like, they're getting what you're doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's so important, you know, because, um, <coughs> you know, you're asking about new bands and stuff. I mean, it's kind of lost its way. I mean, now mm-hmm. with fucking Steve Jobs, actually he was three weeks older than me, when he, well, he's about the same age, but it, three weeks older than he was when he died. And I thought, would I rather be me or would I rather be a richer Steve Jobs and die? Because... That iTunes give all the money away, you know. For a young right. band now, this is what a young band now, you know. You put a record out, you're not going to get any money, and if nobody really hears, you're not going to get an audience right. where you get the kind of money from now to play to, for a band. Yeah. So it's very hard to turn anyway for a young band now, and it was really saddens me with it all, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we Spotify t- giving everything away and all yeah. this corporate stuff. We talk about it all the time on the show because yeah. it happens the same thing to. Actors, where it's like now yep. with technology, anybody can make a movie, anybody yep. can make music on their yep. own, which seems like a great thing. But mm. the the downside of that is that everybody's fucking making music in yeah. their own. If everybody's shows doing it, is anybody listening to it? Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. So see how can you d- d- discriminate against what you're actually going to like, and it's just it's exactly. too many it's goddamn choices. Crumbers. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like to say it like that. It's like Christmas. Remember at Christmas? You know, your mum would have the box of chocolates, or you got. Yeah. A, you eat a full box of chocolates, you feel sick. Yeah. Right, you know? yeah. <laughs> so you go on like YouTube or something, you can see everything or Spotify. Yeah. Nothing's precious, you know. Yeah. You know, you go, I've had enough of that. I go that when you're not yeah. listening properly. You hear you know, half a song and you go, and it's like, I just feel sick after they got so much touch with the old days yeah. of the record. You had to, it was precious, you know. You yeah. Sit, yeah, yeah, you would sit and, down and, and digest it and yeah. listen to every word it's and like learn the lyrics. Yeah. And you're taking it in. Mm hmm. But well, now it's just, just people are flipping everywhere. Go, Fuck that. I, just, yep. I can get on to the next, you know. Yeah. And so you, d- you have less regard for it, you know. Um, yeah. And it, it's like you're in that dilemma. Are you sounding old because you remember the old records and mm-hmm. vinyl and stuff? Yeah. But you'll be moving the technology. And then you see the difference that nobody can exist in this digital world. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So you wonder, yeah, how can they function and do it, you know? That's yeah. weird, yeah. It's, it's, well, it's what we need is an indie virus to fucking spot a lot of yeah. it. Right? <laughs> right. I know, Spotify I feel okay with it. Yeah. Especially yeah. after like being on this boat and being away from my phone for a hot minute. It's like, oh shit, uh, that's yeah. right, things were cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I am starting to realize I had a book in my bag. Last exit from Bro- Brooklyn, and I yeah. thought, you know, I, I've had it in my bag for ages and... Because you go in hotels out looking. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I started reading it again. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we should do? We should make a movie about putting a virus in all these Spotify's and that. And I, love under, they, you know. I love it. I love it. So then we'll bring the music in. That's what I'm talking movie. about. It's happening. The movie's the movie. You know. Yes. The, the, yeah, I freaking love all it. All in one go, yeah. Genius idea. We'll do it. I'm so happy that um, you, the Buzzcocks are still in the world. Yeah. You know, Still kicking ass, and I mean, it makes even though the landscape nowadays is really tough for new bands, you know, it, it's it's just incredible that you guys are still doing and still who you are. We've got to keep going and keep the faith. You got to keep mm-hmm. the faith yeah. in people. Mm-hmm. And even though you know sometimes the young kids get put down for these faith, there are a lot of young kids out there that kind of know, still know about the yeah. guitars and stuff, and. You know, it all comes in waves. I'm sure. You know, I I get a feeling now. It's like, look, you know, enough of that kind of yeah. mm-hmm. downloading stuff. Let's go see somebody in the local bar playing and appreciate mm-hmm. it again. Exactly. Not going, this and that's all over. You got to be Lady Gaga if you want to get any. You know, right? Yeah. That's like going to the moon for a kid that can't afford a guitar. Mm-hmm. You know? exactly. Yeah, I think I think culture will kind of get um, tired of the shininess of yeah. what's going on with technology now, and yeah. they'll, they'll get back to the authentic yeah. side of things you for know, sure. And, you know, I know there's a lot of 
computer geeks and stuff, but at the yeah, same I'm, time, there's a lot of people. I can kind of get this feeling here and there that it's kind of like, do you know what? Uh, bands used to make music, and s- some of them young kids, you know, discover the Beatles and then right. Zeppelin and Sex Pistols, you know. Yeah. There's still elements of that, yeah, you know. For sure. And we see you vinyl know, coming vinyl, back, which yeah. is like... 17% pe- is coming. We need that tactile yeah. thing in our yeah. lives. Yeah. And uh, the technology yeah. has kind of ripped that away from us, and I, I think we'll just find our way back. I've never downloaded a thing in my life, you know. <laughs> I've, I've had a dump, but I've never downloaded That's about <laughs> as down as I get, man. Deep down and dirty. Yeah. Down that <laughs> I've never downloaded things. I've never seen Spotify. I know it's there. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah fuck no. that. You know, movie about a virus. I mean, yep. it's I'm in. <laughs> but also, let me tell you this. I mean, you'd say back when we went to five months, I've had just brought a solo album called Inner Space Time. Yeah, into my journey on that, and a box set of the four, four albums I've done in between the Buzzcocks. So yeah, I keep working in between. Oh you know? yeah, wow. Hustle. Hustle. If you look on Steve Diggle Facebook, or yeah, I was just gonna I, say that the yeah. best way to find to, for fans yeah. to follow you is your Facebook. Mm. Okay, awesome, and I'll put I that. I still in do show it underground, right just that you know. I don't let a lot of people on. People that want to put dip dinners on my Facebook or the fucking kids. It's like no, you know. Um, but I just do it that way. I don't even have sponsored fucking Facebook and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm just going like. If you want to get in touch with me and know how to buy the records, it's just there. There's no mm-hmm. billboards. <clears throat> I know I'm getting genuine people, and you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've sent these records around the world. Or the, the distributor person has, you know. Um, but it's a low-key thing, you know. Yeah. But I kind of like it like that. You could start moving it up to other levels and this and that. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, do you know what? I kind of like sending vinyl and CDs to people, you know. I'm sure there'll be a CD revival soon, you know. Uh, might be. That would be yeah. weird. That be. would be weird. I don't know cassette. about that. We've had the final. Oh, right. yeah. I don't know about that. You'll live long <laughs> enough. You'll live long enough to <laughs> I don't know. It's around we'll the see. corner. When that happens, I'll remember this conversation. <laughs> yeah. I just don't see it happening. I, th- I think CDs were like the worst invention ever. They get scratched up like vinyl. crazy Yeah, I know. You're supposed to jump on them, put jam in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. No, but the reason I'm saying this is like, when I put the record out, some people wanted CDs. Right. And uh-huh. I, I was thinking, I don't want the, you know, the vinyl, which you did. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people wanted the CDs. So I did the CDs and that. I had to find my CD player. Yeah. <laughs> that right. To set it up. Because, <laughs> you know, they sent me a test pressing. Yeah. <laughs> Blow like, the dust oh, off. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do I do this now? <laughs> which which side a, do I put it in? Silver. Should I jump on it and see if it breaks first? Oh, <laughs> Is man. that what you want? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. yeah it kind of, but I put it in and it sounded amazing. Yeah. Not as good as vinyl because it's a, a shorter wave. You know, the vinyl's yeah. got the bass. And the top end, a big wave like the ocean. But a CD's going to sound a million CD. times better than an MP3. Massive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, by that time, you're Mickey Mouse. The, that big wave form like the sea mm-hmm. has gone down. You know, it's chopped yeah. each time. The CD chopped it. But then the yeah, MP3, it's like they're nothing. Yeah. It's like yeah. Mickey Mouse, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, sure. But I put the CD on and I'm thinking, I'm testing this as a test pressing, you know, at the time. Yeah. And I was blown away going, wow. <laughs> you know that's I mean, awesome. my my CDs are all packed away in the fucking roof somewhere. You know? Right, yeah, yeah. Like everybody's, you know? right, right, yeah. <laughs> you either go, okay, I'll get rid of my <laughs> yeah, child, and yeah. take it down to the local shop, and go. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that's my life right there. Yeah, yeah. held on, but um, it's like you know, it, it sounded amazing, and and I never thought like I'm heard put a CD on for about you know eight years or something. Yeah, it's like wow, this is amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. And it's so weird. It's so, so weird. I'm selling CD box sets now, you know, mainly to do that for the physical thing, but they've gone to Russia, China, States, That's excellent. everywhere. Awesome. But what I'm home with is the fact that people want the CDs. Yeah. yeah. And I find that cool now. At least it's something physical. Again, yeah. it's, it's it the is vinyl. That, yeah, it's yeah. that physical you know, thing. I mean, that was a big step down at the time. It's like, you're kidding me, these things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you can't read the, the information on the yeah. back. You know? Yeah. No, um, it's, I, but, it, um, but we're doing that. It's uh, stevediggle.uk.com. I'll okay. Put the market yeah, in. I'll put that up in here, too. But That's... folks can just get in touch with that, and then you get them the next day of the day after them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Best. That's awesome. But, uh, Best. 
you know, I could assign this to record companies and everything, but it's it's like an underground world, like we're back in the yeah, beginning. Right. Yep. And you know what? I don't want anybody to touch it, really. It's like, look, mm-hmm. it's our thing. The records sell. They make enough money to work it on. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to be talking to people going, oh, you want to do this and that, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Start jumping upside down on a video and stuff just to, you know. And that that is the longevity thing about it as well. And the honesty thing, you know. Yeah. I don't want to make a silly video, you know. You know all the crazy videos where, you know, a fucking dog's sick and falling over. Yeah, they, yeah. they get about 10 billion views, you know. Yeah. But it's like, they try and tell you, like, if you do something like that in a video, then, you know, you'll have all these views in there. But it's like, hold on a minute. People believe what I was doing right. with the words yeah, and the music. Yeah. Do you really want me to see you do that to, mm-hmm, just to mm-hmm. sell a load of records? Yeah. Then no. the people that will buy them are not the people that really should right, be buying them. Exactly. You know I mean? right. that's, that's I'd rather sell less for quality, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. No. You go, this is what we do. Exactly what I'm just saying earlier. Back to square one with it. Yeah. Well, it's nice to know you're holding up like oh, yeah. your end of the bargain Still as far as, yeah. You're, you're, day, you're playing your role, man. That's Still awesome. Still rock at the end of the day. Hell yeah. I mean, if you hold the truth with people, the people know the truth out there, you know. Yeah. People know inside. When you listen to them records, the old records and the grooves and the CDs yeah. or whatever now, it's like... They kind of know if you're bullshitting or not, you know. Totally. Yeah. You know, you can hear some people, some songs now, well, it's all made on computer sound candy. It's yeah. just saying, I want a hit. But it's them other songs, as you know, that once you've heard it, you c- your life's never the same again. Yeah. That's the thing about a great song. It's like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'll never be that person that, you know, yeah. again, yeah. that before I listen to that, changed my life, you know what I mean? Yeah. And those are the ones you want, really. You mm-hmm. know? And that's why I try and stick to, because it's a matter of life and death, this stuff, really. It mm-hmm. really to is. me, you know. No, it, oh God, it, that's you the know? best outlook. It yeah. really is, especially in this business. And it and it, uh, it gives me hope. It yeah. really yeah. does. Well, yeah. that's what we've got to have. We've got to have hope with it, you know, and we've got to have the belief in it, all, all that stuff. Yeah. And a lot of people are getting that. I'm sure a lot of young kids as well. And it's some of the young kids that just, you know, the MTV or whatever they're, because it's corporate controlled, that's money music, you know what I mean? Yeah. This song is saying, give me your fucking money, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. It's not saying anything about you or your heart mm-hmm. or your mind or anything. Right. You know them songs. Mm-hmm. They stink of corporate fucking money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're like Harvey Weinstein, but they <laughs> call it a song, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They're raping yeah. you for your fucking books. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly. nothing to do with, like, how are you or, you know? Yeah. Nothing to do with soul, rock and roll, scar, or anything else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for what you do yeah. in the world, and yeah. thanks for sitting down and talking with us. Yeah, this is great, man. pleasure, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Keep yeah. crusading, sir. Well, yes. we've got to pass it on, and hopefully people that come and see us, young bands, yep. will take a bit of that and go yeah. away, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Give them a piece. This has been Fueled by Deathcast. A Death Wish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening.